Hello, this is John Chernis again, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the protocol called ICMP, which stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. It's a very important protocol used for troubleshooting network connectivity, determining delay on the network, and so on. And we're going to study in particular a couple of commands called ping and traceroute that use the ICMP protocol. We'll see that this is indeed the protocol those two commands use by capturing the traffic in Wireshark so we can study it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start up Wireshark and then we're going to try out these commands and capture the traffic and kind of study what they're doing. So let's first focus on the ping protocol. I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything get a command line here just to get ready so I can save some time here. So I've got that ready to go. Now I'm going to go to Capture and go to Interfaces. And again, as a reminder, you want to go to Options under the network card that is live that you're using in your environment, your lab. Go to Options and uncheck the promiscuous mode. We don't want to be capturing our neighbor's traffic, only the traffic going to and from our computers. That's why we're turning that off. And then go ahead and hit Start. Now I'm going to pull up this and do a few ping tests and then we can see the protocols appear and the packets appear on the screen. I'm going to first ping uh, the Google site www.google.com and I should get a response. I get an ARP, I get DNS, the same old thing I've been seeing. Okay, that worked. Now let's ping something else. Let's ping, um, oh I don't know, www.stanford. Uh, um, Pretty close by to where I live and then I'm getting the result, these results. I'm going to go over those results in a minute, just kind of get everything captured so I can stop. Now let's ping something on the East Coast, ping www.harvard, harvarduniversity.edu, just going out a little bit farther. Now let's ping uh, Moscow State University, which is in Russia, www.msu.ru, get a result there. And then the final ping I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ping that San Diego State University site, ping www.sdsu.edu. And if you see this happen to you, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. You'll notice when I ping the SDSU website, I don't get a response. Does that mean the web server for San Diego State is offline or down? Not necessarily. And in fact, if I went on the web right now in my browser and typed that address in, you'd see the website loads. It's just that some networks, um, this is pretty common for what I see in the, the Cal State University, they turn off the, uh, the ability for ping or ICMP to get into the network. This is done pretty often, fairly often, to prevent hackers from easily identifying hosts on the network. Uh, with what's called robo pings, I may have mentioned that in another lesson, um, to just be able to quickly identify live hosts so we, they can start trying to target them for hacking. So this is a pretty common practice nowadays you're seeing to turn that off. So if you see that off, you should try a different method um, such as uh, going to the website to see if you can connect. So it's not the end of the world if you get a timeout. Okay, uh, I need to stop capturing this traffic and then I can back up and go back to this command line interface and talk about what ping is actually doing. Let me scroll up to the beginning here when I type my first ping. It's important to understand what's going on here. First of all, this is the real name for Google. It's been resolved and DNS is providing this information. This is the actual real name, www.one.google.com. This is the IP address for Google.com. I can verify that by going up into the sniffer here, or the um, packet sniffer or the protocol analyzer I should say and scrolling over here and you see 74.125.224.17 is the answer again I don't need to go over all this again it's all the same stuff ARP and DNS is working exactly the same way so that's the actual IP address for Google and if I go back to my command line I'll see that same IP 74.125.224.17 showing here and that's because DNS the DNS server uh, resolved and converted that user-friendly name www.google.com into the IP and then I see four reply packets here and it shows the bytes are 32 bytes it's a small amount of data it'd be in interesting to see what's actually in that data it's probably some type of text data so we'll try to take a look at that and see if we can figure out what it is so let's go ahead and see what's going on here basically um, I can see that my IP is now talking directly to this uh, server here and it's doing ICMP. 
So let's see what is in that packet for ICMP. If I double, if I, I don't even need to double click, I can just go here to Internet Control Message Protocol and then open up the data here. Here's the 32 bytes and it's kind of interesting what's the data. If you look down here, here's the data. If you look closely, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G and it's basically the alphabet. It goes all the way up to W and then for some reason it stops and it starts over again. Uh, but that's what it is. It's basically those 32 bytes are uh, what are in those ping packets. People ask me that sometimes and that's what it is. Every ping packet you check is going to basically have that alphabetical character 32 bytes of alphabet and you're just going to see that's all it really is is just the alphabet. So it's just a very simple uh, transmission uh, requesting a response from a host. That host it happens to be Google and Google is responding back and that's what's happening here. Let's go back to the command line here and let's see what's going on. We can see that there is several pieces of information going on here and basically what we're seeing here is the uh, amount of the round trip time in milliseconds, 25 milliseconds, 24, 38, 26, very short amounts of time and basically that's because the Google website is very close to my house in the San Francisco Bay Area. If I scroll down here and look at Stanford, also close to my house in the San Francisco Bay Area in Palo Alto, I have very similar numbers, almost identical, very quick return trip times from Stanford that's because it's very close to my location not much delay that's the delay that's the amount of time return trip time if I didn't mention is the amount of time it takes to send a packet to the destination in this case Stanford's website and then for it to send the packet back so this is a very brief amount of time 36 52 milliseconds and so on you can also see down at below there's a um, overall assessment I didn't mention this for the prior one uh, for Google but it basically is repetitive it shows the number of packets sent and the number of packets received and the percentage of loss so if it says 0% loss that means every packet got through if I scroll up to Google I'll see 0% loss that means all four packets were sent and received that means we have pretty stable network connectivity now let's go out a little farther if you look here I'm going to the Harvard website and basically this is across the country and you'll notice that the the times are getting longer now 116 milliseconds 99 about four times the the amount of time that it was for the hosts that were very close to my my home uh, another thing I, I forgot to mention is you actually get a minimum a maximum and an average for each host you're paying so returning back up here if you look at Stanford actually even farther at Google you can see the average was 28 milliseconds if you go down to Stanford, you'll see the average was 35 milliseconds. Again, very good. Now we're going to Harvard. The average was 110 milliseconds, and which makes sense because Harvard is you know across the country from me. And then this one is very interesting: Moscow State University, uh, across the world, basically across the continental uh, divide. Uh, basically, 227 milliseconds, and the average was 228 here. So almost 10 times it, uh, the value as it is to hit a host locally in my region. And that's just a function of the physical distance that the packet has to travel. Still pretty good going all the way across the world and then coming back in 228 milliseconds on average. That's a pretty good response. And now let's look at this one for San Diego State. You'll notice nothing happened. All four packets were lost, 100% loss. And maybe we can try to find that in the sniffer and see what happened here you can see these were all successful. I'm seeing a request and a reply. The request is what came from my computer at home. The reply is from the server, whether it was Stanford or Google, uh, responding. And you can see pretty consistently we're getting that. If we're trying to see where the problem exists with San Diego State, we're going to have to go down near the bottom here. And that's where we had the problem. And you can see here, this is the that IP may look familiar to you. That's the IP for San Diego State's website. You'll see the ping request repeats itself over and over. Those are the four ping packets I sent, which is shown right here. Timeout, 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 timeout. Those never got through because they were blocked, uh, most likely at the uh, firewall going into the campus at San Diego State, not allowing that traffic to come in, which again, as I mentioned, is pretty typical. So this is not the end of the world. I can't get any statistics on that because it just doesn't it doesn't show you that